Hi, in this video we are going to see how to conduct hyperparameter tuning for a random forest regression using the H2O platform in R. We are going to try two different methods for the search of optimal hyperparameters. First, we are going to work with uh, systematic search, also known as a Cartesian grid search. And second, we are going to try random search. We are going to be working on this Google Collab notebook such that we get familiar with this virtual environment. So first we are going to start by installing the H2 package for R. Once installed, we can load the H2 package and then we are going to initiate the H2 cluster. And then with the h2o.cluster info, we are going to print the information about the H2O cluster. Okay, so the connection was successful. Here we have the information about the H2O cluster. Next, for this example, when we are going to run a regression, we will be working with the auto dataset. So I am going to upload that dataset here on the on this bar on the left with the folder icon. The file staff is open, so we can click here in the Upload to Session Storage button to navigate to the folder where we have the, the file. So I'm going to select the file and click Open to upload that file. Okay, so here is uploaded. So we are going to load the Tidyverse package to be able to run some preprocessing on that data set. We are going to convert the categorical variables to factor data type and remove the name column from the data set. So in the data set we have these variables mpg. mpg is the dependent variable so we are going to predict the miles per gallon based on some of the predictors or features of some car models such that uh, cylinders, displacement, horsepower and others. Next, we have to convert the R data frame to an H2O data frame. This is required for the H2O package for being able to run the model. So we have to convert that to an H2O data frame. Next, we can partition the data into training and test sets. Here, we're going to assign 70% of the data randomly to the training set and the remaining 30% will be assigned to the test set. Okay, next we are going to need the name of the dependent variable and also the names of the predictors. So the target object will have the name of the dependent variable and the features object will have the name of the predictors. Alright, so for the systematic search or also known as Cartesian grid search, we are going to create a grid using the, um, a list. Here we could use several parameters that we wanted to try. For example, the number of trees or the M hyperparameter. This is also known as M try or here as M tries. So this M hyperparameter corresponds to the number of variables or predictors that will be randomly selected in each node for searching for the best split. Here we are going to try all the possible values between 2 and 6, so 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. And for the number of 3s, threes, threes, for example, we could try uh, 100, 150, 200, 250 and 300. We could include more parameters, so we could add here, for example, maximum depth or the sample rate. But for this first systematic search, we can just try it with this combination of number of trees and n try parameters so that will be the combination that we will be trying so this will be the uh, possible values for the n try hyperparameter and this will be the possible values for the n trees so if we combine them then we will have a total of 25 models that will be tested so in the next step we will be using the h2o.grid function for fitting random forest regression models using each combination, each pair of combination here for all the 25 combinations. So basically the inputs to this h2o.grid function will be the algorithm here will be random forest, then we will have the 
predictors, the dependent variable, we can include a random number generator seed for reproducibility purposes. Here we will be running tenfold cross validation. Then we enter the H2O frame that contains the training data, that's the H underscore train object. The hyper underscore params argument will refer to the to this grid that we have created previously. And then we define what type of search we are going to run. In this case, we, the strategy will be a Cartesian uh, search or systematic search. So this is the input that we need. Alternatively, we could define uh, an ID for, for this grid. The advantage of using this grid ID is that we can run it here one time and then we could try a different combination of hyperparameters and then run again this step and the well the combinations in the second step will be stored in the same object as before so that would be the, the advantage of using this if we don't want to do that for example if we comment out this line then this will be saved uh, automatically uh, it will be uh, R will be automatically generating an ID for this grid so that every time that this is run then it will be saved with a different ID so this is already run this took this time and then in the result we get this we get the, the grid and then we, then we have the, the details so we are using some hyperparameters basically n try and the number of trees so we have a total number of models of 25 and then we have the information about each of those models for example here when the entry hyper parameter was 4 and the number of threes was 250 then the residual deviance was 8.19 and so on for all the 25 models once we have that then here we are going to see that there is an ID this was automatically generated by R so we can copy this grid ID and then place it here in this h2o dot create grid function and this will retrieve the results from that we see from here from the previous step and then we can sort the results by residual deviance um, and sort them decreasingly and then we can print that table with the results so here we see all the combinations of hyperparameters and at, uh, at the top we get the best model uh, this model had, had the minimum residual deviance so that in other words this is the model with the smallest error so 8.19 and then the other combinations of hyperparameters produce models with higher error so at the, uh, the subsequent step we can use this function h2.getModel to extract the a desired model for example here we are going to extract the first one um, because here we have sort them and then at the top the number one model is the best model so we can run that line and this is the best model so as we saw there there this is a model with 250 trees and the value for the m try hyperparameter was 4 so this is the best model and once the, we have this model we could well run some predictions or evaluate the performance of this model on the test set so well for now we can just see that this model here got a um, um, root mean square error of 2.86 so that would be basically the steps for running a systematic search. So after that, we could try a random discrete grid search. So this is the second method that we are going to try. We can do that when we want to try or evaluate a greater grid of hyperparameters. And this can be constrained to just uh, stop after, let's say, uh, a given number of max, uh, a maximum number of models or, or we could ask for this evaluation of models to stop after a 
maximum amount of time for example let's say here 15 minutes or after trying only 15 models so this will uh, select uh, randomly some combinations of hyperparameters and then it will try only that random subset of hyperparameters it's not going to try all the possible combinations for example here we could create a finer grid of hyperparameters for let's say number of trees between 100 and 500 in a sequence every 15, 15 number of trees uh, same for the m try hyperparameters all the values between 2 and 6 and then we could include here more parameters uh, at a very fine scale so this will be a, a fine grid so if we create a grid like that then we will get 4050 possible combinations of hyperparameters so that's kind of 4000 models but probably it will be unnecessary or inefficient to try all those possible 4000 models so to avoid that then instead of running a systematic search we can run a random discrete search so that's what we're going to do here and then in the next step then we use again this function h2.grid and then we state okay the algorithm will be random forest uh, then we have the predictors the dependent variable the random number generator seed the number of faults for the cross validation the h2o frame that contains the training data and then the hyper parameters will be this new uh, grid of hyper parameters and then the for the search criteria argument we enter this uh, list with the parameters for the for the search so the strategy will be random discrete and then we have a maximum number of models to be tested or a maximum uh, amount of time for running these models so when we run that uh, that would take this amount of time this is already run so we can take a look at the results again we get the details about the, the grid in this case we are testing more hyperparameters at the end this previous step only evaluated 39 models and uh, based on the constraints in the search then stopped uh, after only this amount of models after that we have the results for each combination of hyperparameters so we have let's say here this first combination uh, maximum ten, depth 10, entries 4, entries 350, sample rate 0.6 and then for each combination of hyperparameters then we get the residual deviance so then we have um, 39 models and we can try to look at the results again so we are going to need again this ID for the grid so we can copy that and then we paste it here as the first input in the h2o.getGrid function this will retrieve the results and then it's going to sort the results by residual deviance and then here this is going to be sorted decreasingly so let's take a look at the summary table from this performance of this grid here we have these models, 39 models, we have 8 columns we have the hyperparameters, we have the model ID and the residual deviance and this is sorted from the model with the lowest error to the model with the highest error so the first one, the model at the top is the best model so next we can extract that best model so that's the first model in this uh, performance of the uh, grid so we use the h2o.getModel function to extract only that first model so this is the best model we have here the hyperparameters and then we have the report of the out of bag error so here the room square error is 2.83 and we also have the results after cross validation so as we see here the the best model here got a root mean square error of 2.83 and then that would be well in terms of root mean square error 
and then if we compare it against the systematic search in the systematic search the error was higher 2.86 so when we run a um, uh, random search for high parameters then pro we will have better probabilities of finding a better model so at the end when we have found the best model we could evaluate for example the variable importance with the h2o dot bar, bar in function here we see that cylinders and weight are the two most important variables in the selected model and finally we could predict on a new set or on the test set for example to evaluate model performance so we can use the h2o dot predict function we enter the model that we want to run to predict on the test set so the second input here will be the the h2o frame for the test set and that will uh, produce the the predicted values for the dependent variable in this case the miles per gallon because we have that and we have the actual the actual miles per gallon in on the test set then we can compare those values um, to in order to calculate the root mean square error so this last line here calculates the root mean square error on the test set which is 2.45 and this model does well because it is uh, not increasing much the error on the test set compared to the error on the training set so this model is not overfitting so this would be the two methods that we could try when we want to run hyperparameter tuning so we could either conduct a systematic search for Cartesian grid search or we could try a random grid search thanks for watching hope you enjoyed this video don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel